Hi guys! Before I start with PI talk, I have to uh, explain a bit about what you are going to watch. Um, because I was trying to film the video and it wasn't exactly working the way I wanted it. I don't know how to make a video. Let's try this again. I hate my face. I I'm so fucking bored. I hate this video. So I've changed the concept into kind of a podcast idea. Please watch it as if it is. So uh, have fun and I will see you at the end of the video. Test round number one. So Hish, what are we doing today? Today, um, I'm sitting here with you, my dad, and we're going to talk about um, social safety in the leisure and event industry. The better subject today, what does this entail? Social safety in general means keeping people safe from the harm that other people cause. So, some people break the law and other people are suffering from that. That's what social safety in general means. Then the leisure and event industry I am focusing on is events, bars, uh, nightclubs, just all the places you can go out. And then the most known social safety problems in the leisure and event industry are spiking, sexual harassment and violence. These things are all interconnected because people are on a festival, they drink, they use drugs, they don't have all the capacities that they would normally have, and so they are more vulnerable for people who want to take advantage of that. How did you get interested in this topic? I have to tell a bit more about me first. Like every human being, I suffered through some stuff when I was younger, and then I went to therapy for that, and then after that, I came to a realization of what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted my life to be about. And that's very simple actually, it's just being happy. I started thinking of, okay, what do I do uh, to be happy? I listen to music, I like spending time with my friends, I like making music, I like dancing, I like sharing that with friends. So my career choice seemed obvious to do something with leisure and events because that's all of those things combined. So to obtain that goal, I started studying. And then I also started working on festivals. But then um, last summer I was working on a festival at, uh, in Belgium called Extrema. And after work we could join the festival itself. And then I was spiked that caused me to have, well, a bit of a traumatic experience. I woke up in a place I didn't recognize, I didn't know how I got to the place, I didn't have memory of the night, and I felt sick to my stomach, I felt so sick. So something was most likely put into my drink that led me to have this change of mind because I thought events were about joy and about spreading joy and having fun with others. But now after this experience my view was totally changed because now events were about danger and about violations and people and strangers that you don't know. So that didn't align with what I thought it was going to be. It started this inner conflict of okay, do I want to work in a sector that facilitates this for other people to happen? I started thinking of all the shitty times I went to bars and clubs and all the negative experiences I had, and I didn't know how to turn that around. I got the advice to focus on this topic during my investigation and try to find possible solutions for this problem, because I do want to make events about joy again. How did you start to think about a solution. It's more of a societal problem than a complicated problem. I started investigating and I learned that there are a lot of factors that influence this, that there are a lot of people uh, needed to actually change this. For me there are three main factors. To let the problem occur you need consumers, you need uh, the leisure and event industry, the people who organize it, and you also have perpetrators. The perpetrators, I was quick 
and I already knew like, okay, this is not going to change. They, these are people who have serious bad intentions and they are not going to change by me saying, okay, you don't need to do this. They are not capable of seeing what they're doing is wrong. You mean they are part of the problem, but they are certainly not a part of the solution? Yeah, definitely. You have two other stakeholders who can be part of the solution, but for now choose not to be. You have the leisure and event industry. The business model of leisure and events is not about joy. It's not about happiness, kind of make money of a smile. So they have to make money of something else. Well, what people usually do when they go to an event, they go drink or use drugs there or something to make it a bit more extra fun. Their business model is also derived from that. If they sell enough drinks, then they have enough profit to book the artists that they want to book. Uh, and then you have the consumers who go to the festival and they also decide to use the drugs and alcohol that is there. This also influences their way of behavior indeed. So their boundaries are faded. Uh, this causes them to be extra vulnerable for perpetrators but it also causes them to have other interactions with people themselves. It can cause violence in some sort of way because there's more chance of people misunderstanding each other. Also, when uh, people see uh, someone they really like, they would have a different reaction to that um, when they are intoxicated than how they would be if they would be sober. So consumers can be also perpetrators in that sense. They are aware of what they're doing is wrong, but just not in that moment itself. Now there's this belief of, okay, we use drugs and alcohol, so there are social safety problems, that those two go hand in hand, but that's not true. Both parties, consumers and leisure and events industry are accepting it. If you are accepting the facts, how do you get to a solution anyway? The first thing we need to do is to get data. The problem with um, spiking sexual harassment and violence is that it's very hard to prove. So the only way to get data is if people report it. There are a lot of reasons why people are not reporting it. Maybe they feel shame for what happened or maybe they feel kind of also a bit responsible because, because of the acceptancy that we already have or maybe you don't see the use of reporting it. Do you think you can expect reporting from the industry itself? No, because the leisure and event industry is not faced with the social safety problems they cause. But he knows it happens. Yeah, but he is not affected by it. What's your kind of solution um, or your kind of way to get to a solution the only thing I'm asking from consumers to do is to have a change of perspective. If you go to a festival, then your perspective on that should be, okay, I'm gonna have fun now and I'm gonna have a good time. And if that's taken away from you by any sort of way, then you should make that known. Talk to your friends about it, talk to your, uh, your peers, your parents, everyone, you should make it known maybe to the media, to the festival, to the police, because then it becomes something. We can grasp that and we can work on that. What we see in other best practices is that when there are enough consumers saying like, okay, this is a big problem, hey, you need to work on this, I'm not coming. If you are not changing this on your festival, then the event managers are gonna listen. We have a certain power to the leisure and event industry because the leisure and event industry is nothing without its consumers. Because then they will see, oh, our consumers want this, we give that. You don't have to accept that you get harassed or you get drugged or you get violated. So that was already the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. And if you've gone, uh, inspired or interested to know more about this subject or uh, to 
help me come up with this solution even further. Um, then there are some gatherings you can sign up for. They're on the 14th, the 20th, and the 26th of January. And if you want to know how to sign up, you can contact me personally, and I will see you there. Have a good day, and thank you for watching.